Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and it's a blessing to be with you. Happy Easter, everyone. It is such a treat to be with you for this mini retreat in a podcast, this opportunity for us to always take pause to think about the blessings and the goodness and the miraculous works of God in our world and in our hearts and in our families' lives and the lives of those we love. And that is why I am here today with Barb and Don. Weller. I've been looking forward to this so much because Barb and Don are dear friends of my husband and mine. And I feel like this is a sacred offering and that you're, are, you're also giving this offering because of our intimacy. And I want you to know that I recognize that blessing and that gift and that my heart is filled with gratitude and that my heart is also filled with gratitude by your witness, your living witness, and the opportunity and the blessing to have walked with you in some way, and my husband especially, during the story that you are about to share. Maybe we weren't there at the beginning, but at some clim- climactic moments here, closer <laughs> closer to the most recent history. So Barb and Don, thank you so much for being with us. Our You're pleasure. welcome. It's our pleasure. And so Barb and Don are very active parishioners at the same parish as Brian and me. And most of all, they are incredibly faithful human beings. And at times in our lives, our faith is tested. And I think that they went through a testing. And I think the testing was so intense that the light of their witness was even more brilliant. All praise and glory be to God. So I'd love in that spirit and in the Holy Spirit, Barb, if you would open us in prayer. Okay. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless our time with Lindy. I pray that our hearts would be open. I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit would speak clearly to each of us as we share the life that Donna and I have experienced within the last two years. And I pray that the story that we're telling would reach other people who are listening to this so that they may understand that struggles in life are important and that there is always joy and hope in the outcome. I praise you and bless you for all the blessing that you have given to us. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful prayer, Barb, that already reflects your generous heart. And it's almost like a hug to everyone listening because it's very other centered, which I love so much, Barb. So thank you. And I would love Dawn, if you could start at the beginning of really your and Barb's story, because the two shall become one. Yeah. uh, I think uh, the place I'd like to start would be the uh, uh, fact that, you know, when you take your marriage vows, uh, people tend to forget what they are. But one of the most important things is in sickness and in health. And uh, as I tell my story, uh, Barb has exceeded all expectations when it comes to the sickness and the health. Uh, when I was 42, I was diagnosed, uh, actually, uh, I don't scratch that. Um, I was, uh, I did a lot of snoring and Barb suggested that I get a sleep study done. And I completed the sleep study and they found a heart problem. And uh, next thing you know, I was getting a pacemaker uh, put in me. I was 42 at the time. I had two teenagers and one in grade school. And, uh, you know, it didn't really affect me a whole lot because, you know, everything took, you know, care of itself. Uh, But when I turned 60, things changed quite a bit. So in 19, uh, um, uh, no, it's 20, what? Um, 2022. 2022, April of 2022. Yeah, April of 22, um, I had an event that uh, caused me to be in the hospital. Uh, my heart was failing. And what happened was is that I uh, ended up being in the hospital for a whole month, and they were deciding whether to do a transplant or what they call left ventric- ventricular arterial device. Left ventricular assisted device, LVAD for short. You can go with that. And uh, so 
you know, we, we weren't sure if the insurance was even going to pay for all this, you know, and because it's very expensive. So when they came back, they said, you're getting an LVAD. Well, I know there's going to be a lot of, you know, stuff you have to do with an LVAD, cleaning the sites and have two battery packs and a controller in front. And I had to wear that and didn't know how long. And because uh, I didn't qualify for a heart transplant because of the fact that I was too sick. And so, you know, went six months. Uh, and then in the uh, uh, in April, uh, I, you know, did everything the doctors told me, did all the right exercises and all that to prepare me uh, on September 21st of 2022. Um, I get this phone call and said, hey, this is Vanderbilt. Uh, Don, you've been listed on the heart transplant program. I said, oh, really? That's that's great. And when I think of the heart transplant program, you could be a year or longer wait for an organ donor. Uh, so I told all my friends, my family were all excited. I was actually put on the list. And um, that was on a Wednesday, I believe. And then on Thursday, Barb and I always go to daily mass and right before we were ready to leave, the phone rings. And they said, uh, uh, Don, we got a heart for you. And I'm going, who is this? And, you know, his Vanderbilt says, can you be here by noon? And I said, uh, sure. And, and I was excited. So we had the opportunity to go to Mass at St. Philip's. And we were able to uh, receive most of the sacraments we received. Uh, I received confession. I was able to receive the most sacred Holy Eucharist. And I was also able to get the anointing sick as well. And all those just kind of lined up perfectly. And then uh, from there, we were heading to Vanderbilt, you know, and as we're driving up there, I'm thinking, oh, what's about ready to happen to me? You know, because you don't know how things will turn out. And um, so part of me was, you know, excited. The other part of me was, well, am I going to be a cripple afterwards? And so time came and showed up at the hospital. And and uh, I told him I was there for a change of heart. Well, the lady behind the counter was really confused. Said, no, no, I'm here for a change of heart. And then uh, I said, a heart transplant. Next thing she disappears and comes back with the gurney. And there I go on my way in the journey. Um, and, and Barb was there the whole time. And she got to see uh, a lot of the stuff and the medical stuff going on in the background. And so went through the surgery. Uh, if you want to talk about that part of the surgery, Barb, uh, in terms of the waiting and, and all that stuff that you went through. Um, so with the surgery, I mean, we were, I was there the whole time with him uh, that um, we, we had this faith that we knew that everything was going to be okay. When we walked out of St. Philip, realizing that Don received these three most important sacraments. There were people in the church praying the rosary. And then they all, they always pray the rosary after that. But it's just like father Michael just made sure that he made special time for us. We walked out of that church on cloud nine because we knew that they were lifting us up in prayer, the whole parish, not just the parish, but Everybody, like our kids, I mean, they were on their way, and I know that they were praying for us too. But there was no fear. I mean, we just felt like we were like, God's got this. The whole time we realized God has got this. And we go home, we gather all the things that we need to go to the hospital with, and we get there. And and it was just like, it was kind of surreal in the beginning. You know, we're just kind of sitting there waiting around, waiting for the kids to get there. And finally, when they got there, and all of a sudden, it, it got to be where it was like 7 o'clock at night. And then all of a sudden, really quick, they're having Don sign this paper and Don sign that paper. And we're just like witnessing, okay, what's about ready to happen? And all of a sudden, they they bring him away. And I just give him that kiss. And mm. I'll see you later. Yeah. I knew he would be back. Yeah. In the, in, in the process, uh, I'm used to planning stuff and, you know, pulling these strings to get things done. And I found out very quickly that I can't get it done. I've got to turn it over to the Lord. And I basically had to come to a point where I said, Lord, you've got this. You're in total control. I am no longer in control. 
And once I realized that everything started happening, you know, uh, one right after the other to the positive. Uh, and so that, that faith of giving up uh, and turning over the Lord uh, was a pivotal moment because I knew I was going to be taken care of. And, and I knew that I had more things in life to look forward to. And um, while I uh, was going through the first phase of my treatment, I was enrolled in the diaconate program at Nashville Diocese. And uh, I had to take a pause from that. And the only thing I could think about is getting back in the class, you know, uh, because, you know, I, I felt a connection there and I felt that was my calling. So I told the Lord, uh, your will be done. And here's what I'm going to do. Uh, when I get back and uh, uh, I'm back in the diaconate program, started over, but that's okay. Um, and then some experiences happened when I, right after the surgery, I kept hearing these songs, uh, kind of like choirs uh, singing. And uh, I thought that was pretty remarkable. You know, I said, could you turn it down a little bit? It's a little bit loud. And the doctor says, there's no music here. And I said, I hear it. It's It's beautiful music. Then I thought, you know, um, our choir director, John Ngati, had brought the choir up to sing just for me. Well, he didn't. And uh, I heard the angels singing to me. That's what I heard. And it, it was so comforting, so relaxing. Um, you know, after the procedure, I didn't have any pain because that comforted me. And knowing that all these people are praying for me at our parish and our families, um, so what we did is, is uh, you know, I really embraced that. And I had a chance to meet with John after I got back to church finally. Uh, and I told him my story and we both cried together uh, uh, because, you know, I felt like I was touched by the angels in, in that moment. Um, then after the procedure, you know, Barb, she's been a wonderful caregiver. I mean, all along the LVAD process and the heart transplant, uh, you know, because I couldn't walk afterwards because when you when you lay down for a long period of time, you lose muscle memory in your legs. And so she did a lot of running around for me. She drove me up to all the follow up appointments. And, uh, you know, she was very uh, selfless in terms of, you know, giving of herself. She just did what she had to do. And today I can report I'm at 100 percent better than I was you know, even two years ago. And, uh, you know, I get to church every day, go to my classes, uh, and just really uh, enjoy people more because I know that nothing's permanent here. So what mark can I leave? How, what one person can I have an effect on uh, or a parish? Uh, so that's what I live for. I, I mean, I look forward to that, being able to have an ordination with all my friends and family there and with, with Barb at my side. So um, what we look at, you know, I, I, I have a lot of hope in my life, more so than I ever had, because I'm not in control. The Lord's in control. He brought me Barb, you know, out of nowhere. And she has been such a faithful, wonderful um, uh, spouse, caregiver, cook, you know, everything, all of the above. She, she did it all. And what was really special about it is that she did it without rolling her eyes at me. Cause I got to do, you know, you should get up. Well, I couldn't cause you know, I couldn't walk. Um, but I'm fully recovered and I know the Lord's got a special place, uh, there that he wants me to be at. And, and I think it's serving, serving, you know, other people. That's what I live for today. Praise God. And Barb, do you have any other thoughts that you want to share through that? Because I love what Dawn says about you. And I have had the, oh gosh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I've had the blessing and the privilege of witnessing you through all of this. And Dawn is right. You are slow and steady. He said, you did what you had to do. And I want for everyone listening to understand doing what Barb had to do was filled with ambiguity, probably exhaustion at times, threat, threat to the well-being of Dawn, t tons of just unknown and just really staying the course close to God. And you did that and you do that. You continue to do that in so many ways. 
Can you speak to that at all? Even with all your feels, because I know you have feels, Barb. <laughs> we all have feels. Um, with, with just being steady, uh, every time that I was asked to do something, especially with the LVAD, there was, I had to do dressing changes in the beginning every day where he had a, a dressing that was on his abdomen. We had to watch for swelling. We had to watch for, I had to watch for infections. Uh, we had to do blood pressure checks every day. And I had to document everything where I just made sure that I, I was doing everything to the best of my ability, you know, for, for Don's well-being. That, um, I mean, I learned a lot on, on what I am capable of doing realizing that it was God who was just helping me through every step of the way where um, there were times where I would do dressing changes for Don and I know that I was hurting him because, you know, when you're trying to take off the tape that's supposed to stick on and hold everything in place, well, it's got to come off at some point. And after the surgery, there were some sores on his abdomen where when I would put alcohol on him, he would just like, just, I could just see him cringe. And he, I know he was, he said he was praying at the same time. I'm just very gently trying to, you know, clean it and make sure. And it was a, it was a bonding time for us because it was something that I was doing for him because I wanted him to be better. And I knew that he would get better. So that was um, a very real time for me where I was just putting my trust in the Lord um, and just relying on him a lot. Yes. And for those of you like me who do not know a lot about LVADs, what I remember from it is it's a battery essentially that's keeping Don alive. Yes. And you had to make sure that not only the battery that he was using was okay, but that you had backup batteries in case there was a failure. I mean, my goodness, I thought about that so much and just the the pressure in that and also the fragility. It really does talk a, touch on the fragility of life. And Don, you talked about how we never know how much time we have. And you've also, Don, made it very obvious, the gift of new life and new hope. I mean, that's really beautiful that you talked about how you live with a hope that is greater now than you ever have before. And yet you're aging just like the rest of us. And so to grow in hope, that's glorious. And also it reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 11 is that the hope of a hope filled future and the trust in God that God had a hope filled future for you also helped you to kind of persist and persevere in faith as well. So clearly the gift of life and of new life for Dawn and the gift of longevity of life for you, for you with Barb, for you with your children, with your grandchildren, with your friends, all those who love you. That is very, very apparent, praise God. And you just celebrated a significant wedding anniversary. 60 years. 40 years. <laughs> Dawn's making him so. I I <laughs> you, we both yeah. turned 60 at the same time. And it was shortly after that birthday then, yeah. I was following, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so, so yes, you both turned 60 and celebrated your 40-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because yeah. praise God that that all happened. Yeah. Yet what I'm also witnessing, which is, this is why I love the Holy Spirit, is new life in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? How have you experienced Easter the gift of new life after this road of suffering, which we're encapsulating in a brief podcast, <laughs> which we're encapsulating in a brief podcast, yet this was months and months and really years. And so tell us about this gift of new life in your marriage. Um, I will answer that. So when Don was going through all of this, I had to be on top of him with everything. I had to kind of control everything you know, with medications, through what he was eating, um, just all the different details that had to go into it. After he was, you know, over all that, I still kind of had this control where I had to let go of that control. 
And it's kind of freed me up a lot where I don't have to worry about all, all of the things that I used to do. And I made a point of making sure that I was taking care of myself as well because that was important for me because I spent so much time on Don. I wasn't, I was taking care of myself, but not in a way that I, I probably should have been because it was more important for Don at the time mm -hmm. where um, now it's just like, I have, uh, I'm no longer trying to be judgmental. I'm trying to no longer be, um, in control because I'm not in control. I realize that it's a good Lord who is in control of my life and control of Don's life. And I've just, I've kind of, I've let it go. And I can see that in my letting go, our relationship is actually better because I'm not pushing his buttons where I used to push his buttons all the time. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot better. Yeah. It's a whole lot better. Yeah, you know the the hope you um, spoke, you know the hope and excitement, you know even around the Easter season, it's how precious life is and how the Lord's constantly uh, gifting us with many many blessings. Some so small we don't even see them, but when you put them all together, it's a wonderful experience. And you know long before the the heart transplant, um, you know we were once we found it, we were praying for the donor months and months in advance. Uh, and for their family, because we knew that, you know, there has to be sorrow to have life. And, you know, we prayed that every day uh, for that family. And, and then someone finally stepped up the plate. And on the other side, just the support of our friends, uh, our families, even our neighbors uh, brought food over and, and got some door dash for us. It was all that connected. And I think it brought people uh, out of their shell a little bit because of the fact that they were doing something good for someone in need. And that had to, you know, give them a very warm feeling, I'm sure, uh, to be able to do that. And, you know, so the Lord works not only through me, but he's also working through others as well. You know, so, and, and we have a lot of gracious friends and, and, and family members and neighbors. Well, and you are both so deeply loved. You're both so deeply loved. And is there anything else that's really on your heart that each of you want listeners to know? Um, there's a quote. Um, and for some reason, I remembered it. Um, the, one of the priests at our parish, he had made a, um, a comment. It's like, allow God to do what seems impossible. As I look back, I can see that God has allowed something that we both felt like this might be a po impossibility, but God made it possible because of our faith. We just, we had to let go. And, and even in the future, we have to remember, allow God to do what seems impossible we don't know what his plan is going to be for us, but we have to trust that his plan is the plan that we are supposed to live by. And we will be amazed on um, where it takes us. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Praise God. How about for you, Don? Is there anything else that you want to share? Uh, no, just, uh, all the love that I've received by different people. Um, you know, I want to uh, say thank you to all those uh, individuals. And I know that uh, I'm going to do my best with my studies and uh, become a deacon so I can, uh, you know, help in the parish more, you know, and that's what I feel I'm called to do. Yes, praise God. And when I talked before, too, about the longevity and the gift of longevity, I want you both to think for a minute of your grandchildren and this blessed time that you have with them and of all the children, because that's been on my heart so much lately and how we really live these circumstances. Like you said, Don, this joy was born of sorrow. And that was really beautiful that you articulated that and said that. And here we are in Easter right after Lent, the resurrection 
comes after the passion and, and here we're experiencing new life after sorrow. And I think how you have witnessed to that reflects the deep call from God on all of us in our lives of how to walk intimately and closely with him and one another and in our community so that he can bless us with new life. So thinking of your grandchildren and all, all of the children, even mine that, you know, <laughs> what would you want to share with them? I think, you know, what Barbara's saying is that imagine the impossible uh, and we can only do that with God and that uh, we have to rely on him, turn it over, whatever problem that we have, turn it over to him and he will make it whole. He he will just make it all right so that you can come closer to him um, with all the you know circumstances. You start to see all those little things that you never noticed before. But now uh, we, we both see our connecting the dots in areas that we didn't, we knew were there, but we really never paid attention to how special those, those individual moments were. And for the grandkids, you know, uh, since I had transplant, I had two new grandbabies, uh, which is exciting. So, um, but the lesson when they grow up and to be, you know, more mature, you know, I'll hopefully be able to tell them the stories about hope, faith, and dependence uh, on God. As far as the grandchildren, uh, it, it was a blessing to be able to. Uh, so Don Don had to wait six months after his transplant in order to see anybody. He was we we were somewhat we were isolated quite a bit, and God's timing was so providential. Where our oldest one, our oldest daughter baby, our second baby was born. And it was like perfect time when we were able to be there for the birth of her second daughter. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful. And, and it was that new life that we got to experience and also realizing that Don was given a second chance at new life also to be able to see another grandchild to be born and mm-hmm. be brought into the world. It was beautiful. And even even the other grandchildren are just so they, they so love their grandpa mm-hmm. and they, at the time they were kind of grandpa, are you going to be okay? Yes. Grandpa's going to be okay because mm-hmm. there was hope there. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's one instance that was really special is after I came out of surgery and they got me off the ventilator and so forth. Um, they handed me to, stethoscope and I was able to hear my own heart beating the new heart beating uh, for the first time and each one of my kids were able to hear my heart beat too and they were amazed they were in tears like I was is the fact that I'm still here I'm still alive and I'm going to continue to love everybody and it was our oldest daughter who was three months pregnant at the time yeah we didn't know that yeah and so when she listened to Don's heart, she was in tears about the new life. And she realized that she had new life in her too. You know, a three month old, you know, being, you know, three month old, three, uh, being uh, three months pregnant. Right. Little did we realize that our youngest daughter was thought that she was pregnant, but wasn't quite sure yet. And she did not say one word. And, and, and after that, then she finally spilled the beans th- several weeks later. But it was just a blessing all around that all of our children could be there to witness that new life in Dawn. Yes. All glory and praise be to God. And when were those grandbabies born? What months? Uh, Louisa was born in March and Wendell was born in May. Yes, I remember that because this is also a beautiful reminder because for many of you already know, I am a native Californian and live in Tennessee and I'm still getting used to the seasons, even though people from other areas of the country would be like, what are you talking about? They're not that intense. Yet for me, the winter is really new and the the winter... What I'm reminded is that spring always comes, new life always comes. And I remember that you were quarantined 
essentially because of your heart transplant during winter. And that really struck me too, because then new life came in the spring and at Easter time and with these new babies and all the things. And so it was so dramatic in, in so many ways. So I cannot thank you both enough for sharing and for this heartfelt conversation. I, I often tell people in podcasts, I fall in love with everybody when I'm listening to their stories because they're sharing their heart and their soul. Yet it is also an extra blessing in a sense to sit down with people that Brian and I already love and to hear from your hearts and to go back there and to, to just hear all of the glorious ways that God has been at work in both of you uniquely and individually, and then together as one, as a married couple, it's a great inspiration, your marriage. So, so praise God. And Don, will you please close us in prayer? Yes. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the opportunities that you have presented to Barb and I uh, through this whole transplant process. I want to thank you for all the gifted hands that uh, you allowed to uh, operate on me because I know they went through a lot of education to do so. But everybody that's involved with our life are all so special because in, in total, it makes Barb and I who we are today. Continue to bless us and continue to bless everyone so that they can feel that they're truly uh, with the Lord and that he will provide us continual graces. We ask all this in your name, in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful prayer. And thank you for being here for this Easter podcast. And what a glorious reflection of the gift of new life and how all things are possible with God. And it's on my heart that for everyone listening, God wants this gift of new life spiritually for all of us. We all won't have heart transplants, but yet Don said when he went in to get his heart transplant, he said, I'm here for a change of heart. And God wants to change our hearts. God wants to transform our hearts. God wants to convert all of our hearts, including mine, all of our hearts. That's part of his great glory and his great plan. So my hope during Easter is that we continue to open our hearts more and more to the goodness and the glory of God. Can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.